I was a third year medical student. I can barely remember the stories now. And we were living about a block away from a radio station that overnight became this dominant radio station in Los Angeles. Los Angeles was a ossified radio, large radio environment where KLOS and KMET and KLAC or something. K something. Yeah, or were the, yeah, were the, were the, just, they just dominated. There was just nothing else. And all of a sudden, K Rock, which was brand new oh, yeah. street, <laughs> came out of nowhere. Yeah. And people I knew knew people at the station because we were in the neighborhood. And one day they called me and they went, Well, they have this show in the middle of the night, and the program director wants it to be a community service show, and they need some help. And I said, You're in medical school. Maybe you could come on and do a segment called Ask a Surgeon. You'll use big words. It'll be funny. Don't. don't. I'm like, What the? What the? And technically, you're not a surgeon, right? I'm not. I wasn't even a doctor yet. I was in <laughs> medical school. But I was intrigued. Yeah. And okay. I was up to my eyeballs in uh, AIDS patients. I mean, that's mostly what I did the first. So what year is this? This is 83. Okay. And yeah. a lot of the first, like, through 88, 89, a lot of what I did was HIV and AIDS. And in 1983, we were just starting to call it AIDS. We'd been calling it GRIDS. A few months into me doing radio, we had a causative agent we called HTLV3, if you remember that. We were just defining the epidemiology. Wow. It was this mysterious thing. Right at the front lines. With a 100% fatality rate. I, as a third year medical student, every day was telling somebody they had six months to live, and I was never wrong. It was an, a, a dark period that very few people remember because most people were, are, died, or they were like me, they were sort of early in their career, and, and we were deep in it, and it was, the, it was just a horrible thing. Any event, you know, I had this opportunity to go on the radio, and I thought, I'll go see what it is. And I brought my textbooks with me, my infectious disease and gynecology textbooks. Did, I had no did idea you have was... Gray's Anatomy? Did you have I, that I just know these were No, no, because I, I, I moved on beyond that to clinical okay. now. And here were these questions uh, that, you know, were just so important. And they were asking them in the middle of the night to FM Distrock, and nobody was talking to young people about AIDS. No buddy. They'd never heard of it. And I thought, oh my God, I have to, I have to come back. And I just said, hey, can I come back every week? It was a week, once a week at midnight. Yeah. And I just kind of came back every week, thought I was doing community service. And I did that once a week for like 10 years. And if I was on call or something, I just didn't go. And it became a bigger part of my life than I ever expected it to. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden it went to five nights a week. And by that point I was deep in my workaholism clinically. And I was like, how do I, I'll never go home, I guess. Right. <laughs> but I, it forced me to go home for dinner. So when I started doing that five minutes a week, I'd go home at six o'clock and I'd go back out at 9.30 to do the radio show at 10 o'clock. If you enjoyed this clip, we've got more where that came from. Be sure to check out my full conversation with Dr. Drew. And one of the best ways you can help support us is to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss our interviews and short videos as they come out each week.